before we even go to structure, how do you know that these are dependent clauses? Okay, but they could. But what makes these clauses dependent? Not a complete idea. Very good. Each one is just describing the actual subject, but it doesn't express a complete idea. So now, now that we know we have two independent clauses and two dependent clauses, what type of sentence is this? Complex compound sentence. Very good. And a complex compound sentence has two or more independent clauses and one or more dependent. So now we know what type of sentence it is. There's something that happens when we think about the beginning of each dependent clause. What part of speech is at the beginning of each dependent clause? What is it? Who said it? Well, they said it first. <laughs> Can you, you pass me another marker? Yes, ma'am. Right. So now we're noticing that there are verbs at the beginning of each dependent clause. Why is this significant within the sentence? What does it do to the way the sentence sounds? It makes it parallel. Excellent. Can you reveal the final one? I so, can. <laughs> <laughs> so the author intentionally started each dependent clause with a verb, and it creates a rhythmic sound when we're reading the sentence. Parallel structure is the repetition of a chosen grammatical form within a sentence. Sometimes they use the infinitive phrase too, and sometimes, in this case, they use similar what? Verb. Dependent clauses, which start with a verb. <laughs> Very good. So there's something that happens at the end of the sentence. What happens? There's a phrase. <laughs> so each one of these dependent clauses starts with a verb, and we hear this rhythm. But then what happens at the end? It's interrupted. It's interrupted, right? The author intentionally breaks it. So why does he break that rhythm? What does he want to indica indicate to us? OK, Rhonda, go ahead. And just because everything in the list was something positive and then at the end it's, it's the negative. So that's where you see the change. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Erica, and then Nora, I'm coming to you. Uh, it shows the irony, right? Because he's super fit, he has all these trophies, and then he showed himself to be a coward. Absolutely. Go ahead, Stephen, and then. Back to the point before how they were trying to juxtapose Wilson and um, Francis, that like um, the last part like shows how he's very different. Like, yeah. He very publicly made himself seem to be like a coward. Um, the, the sentence interruption parallels the interruption that happens when you're conceptualizing this person, and mm -hmm. then it, that con concept is interrupted with this contrasting idea of that person. Powerful. So thinking about all of the things that we've just mentioned, what is the tone of this sentence? And how do you know? <coughs> Go ahead, Nora. <coughs> Thank you. Um, I mean, it's kind of humorous at the end, this like surprise turn of events of how clearly set up for success he is, and then this like emphatic public display of cowardice. <coughs> and it feels like Hemingway is like enjoying that this happened <coughs> to. Um, Francis, based on the very publicly at the end. I would, I think you're in that moment, but really let's look at the language and how there is a shift in that language. What is the tone of this sentence? I think it's kind of it's, it's despairing. I mean, I think it's sad. I mean, no, I guess knowing what I know with the rest of what happens when he actually gets shot. <laughs> it's kind of depressing. Okay. Any, any, mighty. Go ahead, Erica. I mean, it could be suspenseful because it kind of catches you and you're like, wait, what? Why is he, why is he a coward? 
It could be suspenseful. I think all of you are right in the moment. I'm going to go to you, Kata, and then after that, I'm going to point to some places in the sentence. Well, I was kind of building off um, Nora. Um, I think it's kind of got a sarcastic tone because mm -hmm. there's that irony, but it's got that mimicking. It's trying to make a fool of him. Mm -hmm. um, so the irony with that mimicking aspect makes it sarcastic. So which part of the sentence lets us know that there's something shady or ironic about to happen? Let's start with the top. What do you notice that makes it ironic? Um, Go ahead, Nikki. Um, that they had on the same sort of clothes, but one had on new clothes, the other had on old. Very good. What else do we notice that makes this shift sort of happen and, and we can definitively determine that the sentence is ironic? What else? <coughs> I think the placement of very publicly because you're on that role and it's not just shown himself to be a coward. It's that almost celebratory, publicly placed in the middle. Absolutely. Of and one last place to take us home. What else in this sentence? indicates the arm. Go ahead, Rach. I don't know if this is right, but um, I feel like the whole sentence kind of hinges on the word accept. Like mm -hmm. this idea that um, it's like a contrast. Like you're, you're mm -hmm. saying like they're, they're exactly the same externally, except, and then there's like all these things. That are <laughs> yes, really all these things like what? <laughs> like his age, yes. his privilege, yes. his like court like games, he's yeah. naming how he's such a great hunter, how he has this wonderful um, record, and then all of a sudden, that rhythm and that buildup breaks, and then the author says, he's a coward.